Welcome now to Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night coming in live from London. And today I have an interesting guest. And I've got my co-host, Brian Barrett. Hi there, Brian. Oh, hi, Christine. Good to be with you again. Thank you. Um, and so we've got a very fascinating guest today coming in from India. And um, our guest is a very interesting lady, Anahita Mystery. Um, she um, She's a mother, a single mother to two children. And she comes from a Zoroastrian family. And today she's going to talk to us about health, about magic and working with the light. Uh, lovely to to be with you, Anita. Anahita. Anahita, yes. Right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely name. It's a lovely name, but you've got to remember you. that, that we're, we're English and we'll probably destroy it. I, and I apologize <laughs> in advance. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> does. Everyone does. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, what 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 are you doing out there in, in India? What what is your healing method? Um, can you share it with us today? Yes, sure. Uh, basically, I have been born and brought up in India, and uh, well, small family of mother, father, two children. I have an older brother that is small unit. And uh, being so rations in India, we call Parsis. So, uh, grew up in Jamshedpur and then shifted to Pune. I had two children, divorced, single mother, in the profess, interiors, and in the calling of magic and holistic healing. Yeah, in short. Oh, lovely. Can you? Yes, Hello. I can. You can keep you clicking, just... clicking off a tiny bit. Um, can, can you share what, uh, what your healing sorry. system is sorry. about? Don't, don't worry at all. Oops. Mm -hmm. um, my feeling system is very eclectic. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Can hear you. Uh -huh. So um, my feeling system is very eclectic. Uh, um, I was brought up by, yeah, yeah, okay. I was brought up by believing in different religious uh, gods and goddesses, to say. And uh, my grandfather also believed in Christianity, a little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of uh, Sikhism. You know, so it being grown up in India, it's it's like a cosmopolitan area where we, we learn a lot of everyone's culture more than the religion. And um, when I was really young, I realized that uh, I have. Hello, we've lost you. Hmm. Hello, she's not. This is the trouble. It's India. It's so far away. Hmm. It's a shame. Well, maybe try without the camera, Anita. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To, to try without the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did, is it better now? Yeah. Did 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 did. did Better. Slightly better, yeah, yeah. Because the video takes so much wave wavelength, okay. you know, bandwidth. So much weight, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so where did you lose me? Uh, we you lost... were saying about growing up in um India, um, what it's like. Okay, yes. So like I said, growing up in India with lots of religions and faith and culture, it's more of an eclectic uh, pick and nature of all of us, you know what I mean? And uh, when I was little, uh, when I was really young, I realized that I have a calling towards healing. 
And uh, that being said, uh, my grandfather had a knee problem and then I started working on his knee and then within a week he threw away the walking stick and that's when I realized, oh, I need to start working on this aspect, you know. And then my journey began of uh, getting into health because I was an athlete, a swimmer for my state, and that's where the physical part of uh, workouts and healing came, joined with culture and uh, religion and different religions having different parts of uh, understanding how the body works or spiritually or mentally. So that was a long journey and today I am into uh, holistic healing. That being said, physically, mentally and spiritually, I work on clients and um, I help them in the best way that I can with uh, a little bit of uh, magic that I have learned and experienced. And uh, yeah, so the journey still goes on. And uh, here we are. Yeah, so, so what does that entail, Anahita, the, the magic? So if I was a client coming to you um, mm -hmm. today, um, say I was saying I was having difficulties in my life and, you know, mm -hmm. I feel that things are blocked and, you know, um, what what would you say to me? Okay, so when when uh, years back, I used to work a lot with pendulums and intuitive tarot reading. It could be um, also uh, light work, right? So when a client oh. comes to me, the first thing I ask them is about their physical health to understand how much has uh, the vibrations really disrupted them and how far through it's gone through the aura and the vibration and to the body. So yeah. having the knowledge of uh, physical health in training, and yeah. um, I then realize how the energy has penetrated through them, right? Usually with what I've seen with light workers are, the opposite person does open up completely and start speaking to them and telling them a lot about the mental and the emotional damages that they've been through. And that's how I realize how the body has been attacked. And then we work oh. from there. Yeah, so it could be a few sessions. It's a process. So usually I work with them. Uh, people expect miracles to happen, right, overnight. But uh, a holistic healing approach is a very, uh, uh, a very deep process. And I make them comfortable about talking to them. So I do not bring religion into the healing part of it, okay? It's, it's, it's very... Um, it's very difficult for people to understand magic because as we all know, magic is always judged as it's forbidden. So I don't use the word magic to them. I instead use the word of me working with elements and I explain to them. And then I come to the word of magic and explain to them how this can be used to holistically heal oneself. And most of my clients are very comfortable, so it involves sound healing, crystal healing, sometimes healing with water, you know, sweeping their energies, physically working with deep tissue therapy and crystals on them. So, yeah, there is a lot of processes. And then um, we get to know what resonates best with them physically and emotionally, and then I work with that. Hmm. Is that kind of like right Reiki or not? Um, no, it's more like pranic, yeah, where we work uh -huh. with the elementaries like uh, water, earth, spirit, you know, plants. And it's like, uh, I would say, um, elementary is more easy for people to adapt to, right? Oh, they oh. understand energy of water, fire, earth, you know, and uh, yeah, so that is what I start working with. So not quite Reiki. I don't become the vessel. Okay. In fact, I channel the vibration of healing from the elements. And that's how I work on my clients. 
Oh, right. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. So does that come to you from another place? Um, from many places, many places. Like like you said, you like my name, Anahita. So Anahita in Persian means the goddess of pure water, right? Um, working with water, like uh, the elements of water, cleansing and energizing, magnetizes all the healing process. So... Um, if I say working with elements, some people work better with the flame magic or flame element. Some work better with water, some work better with crystals. So it all depends. These are the elements that are used and the processes are deep and long to quite put it in one line. So yeah. I guess... Um, Elementary healing is what we can put it down to if we are putting it in short. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Brian, would you want to carry on? No, I'm, 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 really, I'm, I'm really interested in listening because obviously um, <laughs> it's fascinating understanding um, how Anita works. You know, it's, 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 um, it's, 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 it's it, I find it really fascinating because usually, um, when sort of like healers work, they work in a different system, and it's obvious that she she's working in a system that even I'm only vaguely aware of. So yeah, you know, teach, oh. teach me more, please. Okay. <laughs> please please ask more questions so then I could understand where I need to elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask some questions, Brian? Because you know more about this. Well, uh, so you go ahead. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really interested. Sort of, um, you know, what's your preparation? Um, do, 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 do you connect with gods? I mean, the elements that you connect with. Um, I, I, I don't believe you just connect with elements. I mean, I mean, the, it, it must be more personalized. True. Is, true. Is, 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 is that the case? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very true. So I work with energies like uh, Angel Sandolphin. That is a very light energy for me to work with. It's more of a, a relationship of us, like I feel uh, very brotherly towards him. So in, in one of my uh, meditations, when I uh, saw Angel Sandolphin appear, whether an illusion, Brian, <laughs> like we spoke about, or calling upon the energies. Um, Angel Sandolphin, I work with the goddess Hecate. I work with the Ayat al-Kursi, which is from the Islamic religion. Now, Ayat al-Kursi is a very powerful chant that wards away any negativity, right? And uh, I then ask my clients to call upon any gods and goddesses that they reside with, yeah, or ancestors sometimes, angels. So yes, it's channeling all of that. And uh, usually how I prepare is I ask the client to leave the room and I uh, cleanse the entire energy with sound, with incense, with water, salt water, and I prepare the entire place. And then I have the client walk in. Usually the client is lying down on their back when I work with them. I do uh, very strongly uh, feel about the flame, right? So I don't like using candles because there is a lot of chemical stuff in that. So I use the pure oil lamp. So it's water, oil, and the flame. So there, boom, I get all the five elements. Uh, water, oil, um, then the earth element because of the oil, oxygen, the air, the flame as the spirit. So that is uh, very, very important for me to have throughout the session. Okay, because uh, the other question, of course, is... is um, do, do, do you um, take the energies into yourself or do you allow the energies to work on the person independent of yourself? 
So the only thing I do is ask for the energies to be present around, to guard us, to put us in a bubble. First, I make my own energy bubble. Sometimes uh, when I haven't done that, it reacts on me in a very serious way. So I make sure I put myself in the energy bubble, calling upon my gods and my goddesses or angels, right? And then... And I ask them to be present throughout the entire healing process, right? Now, that being said, I am constantly in connection with the energies that I have called upon, right? And I let the energies that they have called upon be with them. I do not interfere with their energies. So for me, I don't become the vessel, like I said. I channel the energy and I ask for guidance from the energy as to what I need to work on with the person. So I have worked with bipolar patients. I have worked with schizophrenic. I have worked with polio patients. I have worked with people who are totally healthy physically, but mentally uh, in stress, living in the big cities, and uh, yeah, so I don't become the vessel because that is not very comfortable for me. I believe that then drains me out completely. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. definitely and a skill set. Yeah, and then, then it's like if I let my guards down or if I haven't spent enough time to make my own bubble, I la land up with... Uh, silly little incidences of me just finishing the session and walking out and I know there is just one step there and I just feel oops I'm gonna fall something says take care and boom I fall now is that an illusion that I created uh no maybe I needed to guard myself in the the healing process you know what I mean so, well, yeah, 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 but I mean, I mean, the thing is, 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 is illusion um, or, or not? The, the point is, is, is that you have the um, spiritual power and mind discipline to be able to do this, which is, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously this, you know, what you're talking about is really quite complicated, and um, mm -hmm. it must take a like. I mean, I mean, you must meditate an awful lot, I presume, yeah. So, yes, um, I can say before the pandemic, I had clients from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., okay? Wow. That being wow. said, it gave me very little time to recoup and regenerate. And then I came to a situation like, you know how it is, Brian, you can't quite say no to a client, especially when you're empathetic by nature right? So you go on pushing yourself. And I reached a stage where I had a very severe accident in a gymnasium where I slipped from the monkey bars and I uh, uh, tore my uh, ligaments, broke my meniscus and my left knee, my cartilage was gone and my knee was the size of a football literally within five minutes. And I was bedridden for three months and the only thing that came kept coming to me was build your bubble stronger when you're working for clients you know what i mean yeah i think that, well yeah i mean you are working with some very powerful elementals and um, yes yeah I, 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 it's really interesting that that, that you mentioned the bubble um huh? because many people who um astral travel will surround <laughs> themselves in an energy yes. bubble yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. I I must admit I've 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 never really thought of surrounding myself in an energy bubble when I'm working. Um. To to be honest, I I don't work the same as you, so it's really fascinating mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. how you work. And um, what what I really find fascinating is 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 mm -hmm. the is the selection of gods that you use. Yeah, I, I presume that's because of, like you said, the India is very cosmopolitan, and yeah. and do, do they introduce, introduce themselves to you, or do you use your instinct? How, how do you select the god? Okay, so um, uh, the way I brought up my children and the way I was brought up was 
nothing rigid in religion. Though we were Zoroastrians, um, we were open to go to a temple or to go to a church or to go to a mosque, right? And uh, we weren't pulled down and said, this is the only faith and this is the only way to heaven or for whatever reasons, you know, the core religion uh, fanatism wasn't there, right? So um, we were introduced to lots of gods and goddesses because of the festivals like Ganesha, the one who opens pathways. And then when I started studying it more, um, goddess Hecate, again, is the keeper for pathways right she has the keys yeah because then, cause, cause, yeah i find that really interesting because hakati of course is she, she's she's greek isn't she yeah yeah she's greek yes yes and um well it's it's uh, years of uh, study and uh, experience and trying it out so when when i was studying about uh, goddess hakati um it is not that you call upon her and she works with you Right. You, you must be knowing about Goddess Hecate, right? Of course. Yeah. 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 And it is you invite her and she chooses if she wants to work with you. So that is the experience I had with her. And I uh, made this altar and I invited her. And once your invitation is accepted, you start getting certain experiences to know that she's with you. Right. Uh, like uh, crows, uh, wild dogs, um, you know, these start appearing. And the day I remember in the night, so uh, like I had discussed with you before, I love the potent hour of 2.30 a.m. to 4, 4.30, right? That is my energy time. I literally wake up at that time, okay? So when I did... Uh, invite Goddess Hecate, the next morning I started getting all these um, sort of information that she is happy to work with me or let me work with her, more like, to put it. Yeah, I, 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 can, I, I can feel the energy around you and it, and it yes. is very, it is very oh, intense. Wow. Thank you. Know, you. Thank you, know, you. It, yes. It, it's very intense, um, mm -hmm. but but but, but I, I think the thing is, is is it's quite a lot of people will will not understand um, India really, and <laughs> they they don't understand what a, a, a it, it's probably the wrong word, but it's like a potpourri of religion and belief. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But, yes. but, but of course, the other thing as well is, which gives you an amazing advantage, is um, I know from being in India, you can mm -hmm. buy the proper incense, you can buy the proper oil, you, you know, you can buy the, you know, you can buy this stuff. And really, in the, in the West, we don't mm -hmm. get the opportunity. Yeah, you know, because by the time it, it's delivered from India, it it, it it's something else. But mm -hmm. but but um, do, do you feel the oil? Do you feel the crystal? Do you do, do, do you you know how, how do you do it? Because I mean, when when I've walked into the shops, there's literally thousands of oils. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start, yes. to put it bluntly. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I do use oils. I do use incense. Sometimes I make certain sort of um, herbs put together in a pouch, knowing uh, what herb would be helping in what way physically or just the presence of that herb. So there are thousands of incense in India, but... You really need to know the right places to get the non-toxic ones. Most of them are very toxic, so that right. doesn't help for healing at all. Okay, that in fact will make the person more sick. It might smell very good, but you need to know what's gone in there. So in India, mostly, um, it's the packaging that counts also, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, a very... Um, the more elaborate packaging ones are the ones which are more commercial. The more, uh, the more simpler ones are the ones that are more pure, I have seen. Okay. And now, uh, you know, just by me smelling it, I know whether it's 
toxic or it's uh, thanks to the ability that's given or maybe the knowledge. Um, I can make out whether it's toxic or whether it's uh, non-toxic, right? Like mm -hmm. they might say it's sandalwood, but it has nothing to do with sandalwood. Now, being Zoroastrians, we have been going to the fire temple or when we offer um, the wood, it's pure sandalwood that has to be offered. And then there is another wood because now sandalwood is banned, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I have grown up with that incense and I can, at the drop of a hat, say whether it's pure sandalwood or not, right? So that's the way I choose. There are lovely incense of uh, saffron and sandalwood that works very well for calming all the energies. Sandalwood itself is very healing. Um, then um, there is the, there are these incense that you get in Goa, which I must say I swear by them. Oh yeah, Most yeah, I, I agree, yeah. I agree. I, I, I mean, we have bought the best incense in Goa. Yeah. Seriously, in yeah. Goa. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Is it always the stuff that you use the um the best incense? Is it the ones that you use the charcoal banners for? Sorry, come again. Oh, Do she, you she, always she, sorry Chris. use charcoal burners for, for the incense? Charcoal, yes, charcoal burners. Now even charcoal, there are very very um toxic ones you know the ones that usually people use which is like a business that has really hit the market in a big way are the instant charcoals now those are full of chemicals and really easy to use but not very healthy to use so you get these other charcoals which are very raw the wood charcoals in india you call it lakri koila lakri means wood and koila means charcoal and and it is for peanuts you get it like you know like for an entire sack full of it would be just like 200 rupees so i would work with the wood charcoal for sure if i have to burn incense on it or the the other thing i like to work with is sage white sage that really changes the molecules in the air you know literally uh, frankincense is another one and uh, yeah so in the incense world, there are four things I stick to. Uh, one is the white sage, which does wonders, uh, frankincense, and then the sandalwood, and the sandalwood and the saffron. These are the ones that I work with in incense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, something you might be really interested in, and it's, it's kind of connected, but um, Chris, in Marpusa, um, <laughs> Because the Indians can get proper perfume, there is a really famous um, gentleman in Marpusa who makes individual perfumes for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, have have, oh. have you have have you been to him, An uh, Anita? No, I haven't been, but I've heard about that. Now in uh, Dubai, there is a Jamal perfumes. Okay, if you've heard of it, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've but... been there. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. you've been yeah. there. Yeah. How did you like that, Brian? Had, had oh, I was knocked. Chance? I was knocked out. But the one thing that really um, shocked me is how mm -hmm. expensive some of the perfumes <laughs> were. Yes, yes, yeah. because they they do work with very good products and getting these products and acquiring these products are really expensive. Now they have a branch over here in Bandra and I often buy my perfumes from there and I use a base oil to say uh, out of sweet almond oil okay mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I mix these oils so I make my own oils scrubs depending scrubs for the skin treatment oils and uh, even cinnamon, I just burn cinnamon sticks sometimes, you know, the entire cinnamon stick that you get. Even that is very, very healing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 you, you must have studied for years to know this. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I, I can tell you, I've, like I said, I've been to the shops in India. And when you mm -hmm. walk in, it's an Aladdin's cave of oil, <laughs> incense. Yes. Yeah. I, yes. I don't even know where to start. I, I, I okay. use, yeah, I mean, the first thing, of course, is the aroma. You, you, mm -hmm. you can smell it probably even in even in Mumbai. You can smell it at least yeah. sort of like a few meters before you hit the shop. 
You know, it's yes. like, yeah, yes. I, yes. I, I, I seriously do not know how you do it. I've been in there. Literally, <laughs> there is incense, oils, as far as the eye can see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I yes. don't know how you do it. Seriously. <laughs> I have no so idea. The that, sorry. The incense that are really strong. Okay. And you can smell them. The further you smell them from, the more toxic they are. Right, okay. Okay, because they are not potent, they are toxic. Okay? Right. Okay. Uh, now, the material that they use for incense, I prefer the incense that they call dhup. Okay, dhup means smoke used for smudging. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right? That doesn't have. Uh... Okay, so this might seem a little shocking, but a lot of these toxic incense the material base is cow dung so that it burns easier you get it wow. yeah yeah. I yeah. Get it. yeah yeah the sticks are made of cow dung and then they are dipped into these chemicals with soak in and then they are dried and then they are sold that is the ones that are very strong in smell and toxic wow because yeah. dung is cheap right so the entire base is free for them now all they have to do is mix the chemicals. <clears throat> I, I, I never knew that. I never knew that, seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm being enlightened. You, you t you're teaching me th stuff I, I didn't even know, which is brilliant, <laughs> you know, which is fantastic. They also you... use a lot of carbon powder. Sorry, I must mention that. They also use a lot of carbon powder sprinkled in the dough of the incense that they make. So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Have, have you got any more questions, Chris? Um, n not kind of. Um, Anahita, what was the uh, the Islamic chant that you were talking about um, that wards okay. off negativity? Yes, that is called the Ayatul Kursi. Okay. I haven't heard of that. How do you spell that? Uh, a y a t a l. -A Chris, I, 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 I can send it to you. I've, 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 I've got oh, it. Okay. I've got it. I've got that it in English. Okay, okay, I've, okay. it, I've got it in English, <laughs> and I've got it in yeah. um, and I've got it in um, in Arabic also. In Arabic as well. Yeah. Yes. Which yes is quite yes. good. So th that is just the most beautiful uh chant and a strong chant that i've worked with so many times uh if i can share an incident of one of the times i used that yeah uh, mm -hmm. was uh, that was when i remember i got uh, so after the pandemic finished we were staying in bangalore in a farmhouse my ex-husband's farmhouse um so we were there for five months of the pandemic because it's open and beautiful for the children and everything long story short i come back to bombay looking for a house so i was for a month in a hotel and i come back in the evening and i have teenagers one is 19 and one is 20. now my 20 year old is out for the night right partying and uh, when i come back at around 12 30 i get this download pray the idol kursi right now and it was a very serious download so i leave everything and i start praying the idol kursi and and the download comes pray again and i do it again and it says pray again till i recited it at least about six seven times and then it came to me that you are shielding a car okay and I was like, oh, my God, it's one of my children. <laughs> OK, so I start now making the bubble around the car and not knowing which child it is, just making the bubble. And then I get a phone call from my daughter saying, Ma, I've met with an accident. I'm fainting. I don't know what is happening. Please come immediately to Holy Family Hospital. That's where I'm being taken. And this was while wow. just the pandemic had given over. So it was very difficult to get any mode of transport. And here I'm running on the road and then I get a taxi. And while I'm heading to Bandra, I'm still praying the Ayat al-Kursi. And I, was, I saw the car, the two cars that banged into each other. And a Skoda car is really strong. And the entire Skoda uh, okay. just Okay, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, the recording's coming to the end. Uh, we okay. we, we okay. have to say goodbye, but I, I think we definitely want you as a guest again. What do you say, Chris? Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry if I to elaborated to you. too much. Yeah. No, no, no. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. Okay. So, um, 
I'll I'll say goodbye. What about you, Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye, uh, Anahita. Thank really you, nice thank to Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much, Brad. Thank you so much, Chris. It was wonderful talking to you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Okay. Good, good, okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.